using Elodia Densa and Chardis and Eliguia uh, within your pan system. Hi everybody welcome again to another episode of fish keeping jamaica welcome to my channel my name is Raleigh and i have an outdoor pond system i live in jamaica and jamaica is located in the tropics the tropics experience a wet season and a dry season the wet season starts uh june 1st and ends uh november the 30th which coincides with the hurricane season now uh the Wet season is where we experience like tropical storms, a lot of rainfall, hurricanes, to name a few. And the dry season is where we experience a lot of drought, um, you know, shortage of water, time is hot, um, a lot of issues as it relates to moisture within different different species. All right, so I keep fish outdoor and i have roughly about 35 systems five indoors and the remaining outdoors i also um breed uh, tilapia as uh you no know, educational anecdotal experiential um you know thing right now in my outdoor experience um fish keeping over the past uh, uh, five no eight years outdoors um online from 2017 that gives up eight years yeah two years before that yeah eight years right i have been outdoor right uh, so i started to record and make catalogs of my shares as of 2017 all right so where i'm going with this i started out and when you look at my old videos you'll see me by the river and i will be getting like these plants Elodia densa and there are different categories of Elodia densa, Elodia, right? Or should I say different categories of densa plants? You have, you have Anchardis densa, you have Elodia densa, you have Elegria, or something like that densa, and the whole list of the different plants um, is, so, is, so, is so awesome. Right now, these plants are regarded as oxygenated plants. This is not something that I am taking out of a book. But rather, what what I have ex actually ex been experiencing, right? Now I use these plants, yeah, these plants as a means of oxygenating my plant. Well, my ponds, right? In addition to the plants being in there, and they are oxygenating my plants, they serve as a modium for in which um, fries that are bred within the space actually hide. And for some fish like um, guamis and uh tilapia they might munch on the plant consuming it a bit all right so what today's video is about is about the, the frequency or should i say the popularity of this plant now i'll be spending most of the time sharing with you well for the next couple of minutes right um about this plant this plant is what i call it now a, a plant that is difficult to die and it actually adapts itself to different climatic conditions, making it very difficult for you to, let's say, um, uh, how you are saying now, uh, damage it so that it will just automatically just non exist. Right? Unlike the, the hornet that will actually die in, in climatic conditions, like for example, if the time is too hot. If time is too cold, if it's not, it's not getting that care which it needs, the pH is off, the hornet will actually die, frizzle out and die. Um, Lydia then says not like that. What it does, it, um, it has a tendency, for example, you might see it floating at the top. That suggests that, um, you know, it's okay with the temperature. When the temperature gets too warm, it, I don't know how it does it. As I did a video on this, it's as if it is haunted, it will just sink to the bottom of the pond or the aquarium, whichever you keep it, 
and um, whenever it feels like again it just springs to the top now LED adenser doesn't have to be planted within the substrate in which you are it can just break off a small little piece like this right and over um, let's say a couple of weeks this little piece in which I broke off and can become a large piece like this whereas if you have um, if you have a lot of fish in it which supplies nutrients now in some spaces in some spaces throughout the world um, you have been warned by persons have been warned about this plant because LED adensa is regarded as a plant that actually adapts itself to situations it's regarded as an invasive plant invasive plant it regarded as a plant which we should just take over the water space and have a sh as I have already shared with you um, in a video that I did I lost two manganos because um, I just packed too much LED adenser in a container and um, two manganos just struggled to keep a pace with the plants for a bit and they actually died right um, too much within the space can lead to the death of your fish right um, LED adenser is found in some of the waters within the Antarctic right um up north you know pass in canada up up north there are evidence that LED adensa exists within waterways right this is how um this plant is what i call it now can be dangerous to water spaces now before you actually order LED adensa you know, it be, well in some european countries in some European countries, LED adenser is actually banned. Um, it's 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 regulated by the authority as it, it can't come in the country because you know, for example, let's say that I break off a piece, right? And I once there's water and I throw it into the water, this piece over a couple months will end up um, causing the growth of probably a larger piece which end up going into a mass, which end up actually blocks the river and it acts like a sieve in the river, disallowing the flow of water freely down the, down the, down the stream, which in turn will regulate the, the flow of fish, right? And the flow of um, nutrients down into um, different spaces, water spaces. So before you actually go about, um, you know, purchasing LED adenser, um, in sections of Europe and sections of North America, Canada and America. And check with your local authorities to see whether or not these plants are like on the list as not to enter the, the space. You, you might just get in legal problems if you go about doing that. Now, LED Adensa is a great plant used for breeding small fish such as well, breeding fish in particular, such as goldfish, live bearers, and it's and 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 also egg scatters, right? So LED adenza it, it, it can be a rewarding fish as it actually consumes the nutrients within the water space, right? However, too much LED adenza not only blocks the flow of water and it um you know create a problem within natural water space but <coughs> it can also facilitate the the breeding of pests such as mosquitoes okay so i have bootstock in this space right nine tilapia um this morning i saw well this morning or yesterday I saw some mosquitoes over by that side right now the mosquitoes and I took out some the mosquitoes what the mosquitoes um, tend to do is to find the spaces within the plant that is not that visible to the fish and it will lay eggs and um, they, they, you will have mosquito being birthed within the system now these tilapia are bootstock uh what i've tried what i've tried to do I've, I've actually tried to starve them sometimes 
so that they look toward the pawns for situations like that so uh, periodically I will see them shift into the plant and periodically I will come out and I will move the plant like this so as to expose any little larvae that might be hiding amongst the plant that's how I manage my situation but in the wild you can imagine all of this not being done right and the fish is you know just struggling to pass through so they have no time to actually munch on the larvae as a result of that you know what happened mosquito population increases so as I shared with you before this plant very good plant but you should be careful actually adding it to your system and if you add it to your system you should spend time some time removing it cutting it meaning like cutting it and throwing out some of it because if you don't if you don't do that what will happen is that it will actually crowd your system choking your system and your fish will actually die thank you for stopping by guys have a wonderful day i hope that this will share um, help you in understanding um, management of your plants out there bye bye